be very uh, thoughtful and also uh, seek advice on how to best deal with obstacles as they come rather than giving up our determined effort to improve our life, how to really look closer and see that what appears to be an obstacle is an opportunity for greater progress or greater gain. Because life is like that. Um, in any, even anywhere, in any sphere of life, uh, anyone who tries to achieve something always has some challenges. But challenges is like fine-tuning the goal. It's making the goal even better because we can't really see a lot of times where we are going when we are making our promises or our vows to improve. So from the, from the uh, angle of the material energy, you'll always find that there are obstacles or what we say challenges. But we should welcome these challenges and see them as opportunities for greater improvement. Um, let's see, what was the, there was a nice statement. There was a story, maybe, I don't remember her name, I think her, something Wilhelm was her last name. She, I can't remember her name, but she was born back in the 1920s or something, around 100 years ago. And she was born, she couldn't walk, she had defects in her legs. And the doctor told her she would never walk in her life. But she said to her mother, not only do I want to walk, I want to run. This was her. So she didn't take the doctor's uh, advice or restrictions, and she did everything she could to walk. And she was struggling, but somehow or other she overcame her deficiency and she started to walk. And then that wasn't enough. She decided, uh, now I want to run. And she could hardly, just barely was walking. And so, I don't know all the things she did, but she was determined in her mind, I want to run. And after some time when she was going to school, she entered into races with other children, and she was the winner of the race. After some time, she said, not only do I want to run, I want to be the best runner in the world. <laughs> So she kept practicing and somehow overcome whatever physical handicaps she had. And she actually entered into the Olympics and won the Olympics for the fastest runner in the women's category. That was her determination. This is, this is in the Guinness Book of Records. I'm not sure. Her last name was Wilhelm. She thinks she was from Germany. But her, her, her uh, determination, at the time of birth, doctor said, you won't even walk. She said, I don't need you. <laughs> she was so de So there is a certain element of determination. When determination is there, you can overcome even the most difficult obstacles. Determination is a feature of the will. It's something you can you can bring about because it's part of your nature. But then again, we also have to see what in our life makes our determination less. What is watering down my determination? What association can I get that will help in my becoming more determined? And that's a very big part in becoming determined, the association we keep also. Don't go. Thank you. <laughs> you have to go? It's boring? You want me to speak on something? I'll tell some jokes. <laughs> it's not boring? 
Oh, you can call them at 12 o'clock <laughs> and say Happy New Year. <laughs> but since, you, since you're Kalindi and you are the, one of the best book distributors that we have in Ljubljana, I can't say no, so go ahead, call your parents. <laughs> But I'd like you to be here because when you smile, I feel happy. <laughs> she has such a sweet smile. <laughs> um, okay, so this feature, and Srila Prabhupada, he speaks about determination and throughout his scriptures, in, in his scriptures, but one, one particular verse from the... Uh, from the fourth canto, chapter eight, verse number 30, 4830, Prabhupada talks about the process of Krishna consciousness. And in the end of the purport, he says, some people say Krishna consciousness is easy. And some people say Krishna consciousness is difficult. So what is it? Is it easy or is it difficult? So he poses the question. And he said, for those who have determination, it's easy. For those who don't have determination, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. So these are, this is the deciding factor in moving ahead in our spiritual life. Um, there's a nice story. <clears throat> To give an illustration how determination works, it's in the Mahabharata. It describes when, um, oh, who was that? Uh, the father of Asvatthama, what was his name? Dronacharya. Dronacharya. He was teaching Bhima, Arjun, and Yudhisthira how to fire arrows at targets. He was giving them archery instructions. So what he did, as he uh, put a clay bird in a tree, and then he called, first he called Yudhisthir, and he said, okay, come, stand here, and uh, look up in the tree, pull back your bow. Um, what do you see? Do you see the sky? Yes. Do you see the tree? Yes. Do you see the bird? Yes. Sit down. He calls uh, Bhima up. Bhima, come. He tells him where to stand. Look up in the look up in a uh, look up towards the, the bird in the tree. Do you see the sky? No. Do you see the tree? Yes. Do you see the bird? Yes. Sit down. <laughs> and he calls Arjun, his best student. Goes through the same thing. Arjun. Please stand here, pull back your bow, look up into the tree. Do you see the sky? No. Do you see the tree? No. Do you see the bird? No. What do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Shoot. <laughs> he only saw the target, that's all. Now this is Krishna consciousness. We keep our mind focused on what is the goal? Is to develop our love for Krishna. Whatever helps to make a, to help us to develop our love for Krishna, that we want. And anything that takes away from that, we are not interested. <laughs> so loving Krishna is the goal of Krishna consciousness, and loving Krishna is the nature of, the, of each and every living being. So to develop love for Krishna is your nature. It's nothing foreign. But material energy is very powerful and very much determined to also to divert your attention away from that goal. So therefore, your determination has to be stronger than Maya's determination to devote, devote, divert you away. And that, de that determination comes from association with people who have that. That's one of the main reasons. When we associate with people and we see what, how, what they're like, what makes them successful in the activities they perform, then we observe that, and we at, this, at the same time 
we see it's also possible that I could also pick up and also practice some of the same things that they're doing. So that association is so powerful. But then again, when you go back to the story of looking up in the tree, you see the sky, yes. Do you see Maya? Yes. <laughs> do you, we say, well, do you see Maya? No, we don't see Maya. In other words, we're not interested in what will actually bring us away from Krishna. We keep our goal focused on, on the goal. When you bring in the light, the darkness goes. And when the darkness goes, then there is only light. Keeping your consciousness on Krishna means to make those activities you perform one in, in a mood of wanting to please Krishna. If we have a desire to please Krishna, then Krishna will show you how you can make that desire happen by the way you do your service. We should do our service in such a way that it becomes the most important thing we're doing. You think in your life, what is the most important thing I can do? You know, maybe we pick a day, or you might pick a year. What is the most important thing that I would do throughout a day, or throughout a month, or throughout a year? And then apply that same thing to everything you do in Krishna consciousness. There was a, there is a, there was a, he was kind of famous. He was the hero of the hippie generation. His name was Baba Ram Das. <laughs> uh, Richard, I think his name was Richard Alpert. Baba Ram Das. And uh, he was the, he was the one of the first persons who came in contact with LSD. And he was experimenting with LSD. And uh, he was having a lot of spiritual experiences because you can have spiritual experiences on drugs. That's a fact. But the, but the thing is, it's artificial. You can't maintain it. When Prabhupada was talking to one person, Allen Ginsberg, Allen Ginsberg used to like to smoke marijuana and then chant Hare Krishna. And he was saying, you know, it's really nice. Prabhupada said, yes, you can have an experience using drugs, spiritual experience, but it's artificial. You become dependent on the drug. We, we want to be dependent on Krishna, not something, not some material substance. So this Baba Ram Das was, he became one of the hippie heroes of our younger generation. I grew up around his, some of his teachings. And one book he wrote, which was really interesting, was called Be Here Now. Be Here Now. Um, and when you examine that statement in relationship to some of the statements made by our charyas, you find that Bhakti Thakur has said the same thing in one of his songs. Forget the past that sleeps. Near the future, dream it all. Act in times that are with thee, and progress ye shall call. Mm -hmm. Very nice, poetic. Forget the past, the past is gone. You can't change the past. What the past can teach you is all that it's, the path is worth. What you can learn from the past is what, what the past has to offer. But you can't change it. It's whatever's happened has happened. The future, people in the material world are always dreaming that life will get better. Right? Otherwise, how can they go on? There's no way a person can go on in the world unless they actually believe things will get better. If you think things are gonna get worse, I mean, it's like, well, why even try, you know? <laughs> but that keeps the world going. It will get better. <laughs> it hasn't gotten better, but it will get better. <laughs> so, the dreaming of the future, right? In the future. So, but Prabhupada Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, uh, forget the past, this ne'er, ne'er, that's, you know, like Latin, 
you know, the old, old English, near the, never, N-E apostrophe E-R, near the future, dream at all. Don't dream about the future. Act in times that are with thee, in progress ye so call. In other words, live in the present. Live in the present, because the present is the only time. There is no other time but the present. That's all. It's always now. <laughs> just like sometimes if you want if you want to get rid of somebody who's bothering you, you just tell them, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and then when they come the next day, you said, I told you, tomorrow. <laughs> so it's always tomorrow. <laughs> you know, <it's> just <laughs> so live in the... <laughs> Yeah, so it's always today. Tomorrow never comes because it's always today. <laughs> now is the only reality. So, of course, devotees plan in the future, but planning in the future means preparing in the present. In other words, live in the present. What happens in the future will depend on what happens in the present. So each moment is an opportunity to become Krishna conscious. No matter what situation you find yourself in, you can always see how can I become Krishna conscious in this situation. And that's using that moment in the best, best possible way. So this is a way we should see that our life centers around being very much present in everything we do. And that's how people become, what we say, satisfied. People are never satisfied because what's happening in the present is not up to their standard, and so they're always thinking the future will be different. But make the present, and that's easy. In the material life, it's difficult because you know, you're under the circumstances of the three modes. But devotees are not under the modes, they're under Krishna. So the devotees can always think of Krishna at any time, anywhere, in any situation. And Prabhupada said, if you think, he said, when you think of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no force in this world that can impede your progress, nothing. Because when you think of Krishna, you are with Krishna. To, to the degree you are absorbed in thinking of Krishna, to that degree you are. Because Krishna is not something that is a tangible thing, it's a spiritual principle of the, our consciousness. When our consciousness is on Krishna, we are Krishna conscious. <laughs> and if you're Krishna conscious, there's nothing else like that. Don't worry about the material situations. Things will get better materially, things will get worse material. It's just the way it is. Don't worry about these things. Sometimes we get what we want, and sometimes we don't get what we want. <laughs> what can you do? But you, if you, but you can always become Krishna conscious at every moment. And that's, that's satisfying. There's a story where, how's that story go? Mm. There's, uh, let's see. Oh boy, this is, this is a nice story, but I can't think of all the details. There was one old man and a young boy, and they had a horse. Old man and a young boy, and they had a horse. So the, uh, they came into one town and the old man was riding on the horse and the young boy was walking alongside of the horse. And people said, just see, look at that. That old man is sitting on that horse and that young boy has to walk. Isn't that horrible? So they heard, so they thought, all right. So... Uh, so they, they switched. So they put the young boy on the horse and the old man was walking. 
So they came into the next town. And the people said, oh, just see, look at that, that old man, he's so old, he has to walk and that young boy is sitting on the horse. They're just being cruel to that old man. So they heard, okay. So they decided, well, we'll both ride. So they came into the next town. So they're both on the horse and people said, just see, both old man and young boys on the horse, the poor horse has to carry both of them. <laughs> so they thought, all right, we'll both walk. <laughs> so they had, they carried, they walked along with the horse. And then they came into the next town and people said, just see, they have a horse and they're not even using it. <laughs> You get the message? <laughs> whatever, whatever you do, there's something wrong. <laughs> it's just the way the world is. <laughs> so don't worry about whether things happening this way or that way. Just try to keep your focus on Krishna and on devotional service. And what the most important thing in developing our Krishna consciousness, and this is one of the best and most important subjects, is sadhu sangha. The association and the relationships that we develop between devotees are the foundation of the happiness that we experience in our Krishna consciousness. So develop loving relationships with each devotee. That doesn't mean you go around bracing everybody. That's not the idea. If you want to do that, you can, but be careful, there might be some brahmacharis that are not, are not into it. <laughs> so what it really means is when you're in association with anyone, think, how can I serve that person? That's the key. The key is, sadhu sangha means how can I serve in the association of others? If you have that mindset, you're always happy because you're not looking for anything but for service. And when you're looking for service, you'll find it. <laughs> That's something you'll always find. So if we're always, and that builds wonderful relationships. Sachi Nandana Maharaj tells the story of the, uh, it's, uh, it's, what is it called? I can't remember the name of the story. But, one man, he goes to heaven, and he's in heaven, and he says to the uh, uh, Saint Peter, he's in charge of heaven. So he's he's like the commander in chief of heaven, just like Vrinda Devi is the commander in chief of Vrindavan. So we have Saint Pete, he's up there, and so one man says to Saint Peter, "What is it like in hell?" He said, all right, come on, I'll show you. So he takes him to hell, and it's around lunchtime. So everyone sits around this big, big table. It's a round table, circular table, and everyone is sitting around, and all the food is in the middle of the table. And everyone has these long forks from where they're sitting, going all the way to the food. And then... Everyone is waiting for the bell to ring, which means begin your lunch. So then the bell rings and everyone is sticking their forks into the food and everyone's fork is banging into another fork and they're dropping the fork. And the forks are so big that they can't turn around and eat the food, it's falling off. And nobody's happy. <laughs> so he says, that's hell. <laughs> and then... He's, then the same person says, well, what is it like in heaven? He said, all right, I'll show you. So he takes them to a special place in heaven where it's, and it's also lunchtime. And what do you have? A big round table. Everyone is sitting, all the heavenly residents are sitting on the, around the table. And everyone has long forks and all the food's in the middle. Same setting, nothing's different. And then they ring the bell, and then everyone takes their fork and feeds the person across the way, and that way everybody gets to eat <laughs> like that. 
No. So that's that's Krishna consciousness. It means to try to find ways to make the devotees happy, to serve the devotees. When you do that in a Krishna conscious way, not in a material way, it's not that we try to make people happy by pandering to something that is material, but something spiritual. Then uh, you'll see, and of course, uh, it's always happening to some degree, but it can always be improved more and more. And Sadhu Sangha is the foundation for Namruchi, and Namruchi is the goal to develop a taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord. And the more we associate with and serve Vaishnavas, the easier and more natural it is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Yeah. Like that. So if each and every devotee thinks, how can I serve the other devotees? Not like, well, if I get a chance, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll just go on. No, it's not good enough. You have to ha actually have to think how to do it. You have to make plans how to do it. And you'll actually see Krishna will show you so many ways, not just one, so many ways. Because Krishna, he sees that as the most important thing. He says when devotees are working together and serving, that is the most satisfying thing and in the most powerful thing. Nothing can break that. No force from the outside can break the sadhu sangha when everyone is working together in the Krishna conscious way to assist and serve each other. So this is the this is the foundation by which spiritual life becomes happy <laughs> and joyful. We all have our struggles, we all have our problems and we should try to work on those that's also important but if it's that's the only thing we do then we are missed the opportunity for making spiritual progress and we will and you can't really solve all your problems anyway because as the understanding is, is when you when you bring in the light the darkness goes when you bring in krishna all all the problems go there was another another story. <laughs> Two devotees, they were both temple presidents. This is back in the old days of Krishna consciousness. They couldn't, they didn't like each other. They didn't even want to talk to each other. They didn't even want to look at each other. <laughs> they had such a enmity towards each other. I mean, it was like that. And, and now there was a big program. It was a festival. And both of them were at the same festival. Mighty well. And so, um, and the, the kirtan is going on, and this, and the devotees got into a circle, and the people, the devotees were dancing in the middle, and everyone was in the circle, clapping and dancing around in the circle. And so there was one devotee there. He knew that these two temple presidents they don't really like each other, so he was going to do something to solve the problem. <laughs> So what he did is he started dancing, and then he danced with one of them, and he got him to dance into the middle, and they were dancing together. And then very strategically, he started to dance towards the other one. And then he got close to the other one, and then he pulled the other one, and the three of them were dancing together. And then he moved out, and the other two, the two temple presidents were dancing together, <laughs> And then they just started to hug each other and they'd forgotten about all their problems. <laughs> Very good strategy. <laughs> it also tells you how powerful kirtan is. <laughs> when kirtan goes on, everything is nice. <laughs> oh, you're my enemy? Oh, okay. I didn't really know that. <laughs> well, we'll pick up on that later on, but didn't... <laughs> Right now, the kirtan is, is nice. <laughs> so, so Krishna consciousness solves all problems. <laughs> These are so many wonderful ways that we can always improve. So this, found, this opportunity to make advancement centers around association and service to Vaishnavas. So if we, we can think of a way to make a vow and 
for the upcoming year that may be one of the ones we could choose, how can I strengthen and develop better relationships with each and every devotee? It doesn't mean you have to be friends to it, all the devotees, but you should be friendly with all the devotees. That's a different thing. Being friendly is one thing. Being friends is usually, you usually choose your friends. <laughs> people who are close to you, people who have the same natures like that. But being friendly to each and every devotee is what a devotee is. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. One who is, one who is a friend to everyone is actually very dear to me. He writes that, he speaks that, and which is in the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So each and every devotee is special. Why? Because they're a devotee. <laughs> That's why they're special. So how many of the living entities in this material universe actually come to Krishna conscious? Very few. And the number is so, it's, not, there's not, it's less than 1%. But those few that come, are special. Why? Because somehow or other they understand, they understand that this is the goal of life. At least they have that theoretically, and that's important. So Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sastri Hoy, Lava Mate, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva City Hoy, in the association of devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, brings one fast, and we use that word in a very direct way, fast to the stage of pure Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, you can become fully Krishna conscious in one moment, or it may, it may not happen in thousands of years. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> in other words, that's how it works. It doesn't have to be slow. It can be. It's generally gradual, but it also can be accelerated by sadhu sangha, like that. Okay, so these are, so then again we should think, oh, okay, the new year is coming, it's traditional, it's fashionable, it's beneficial to make a vow, so let me think, what can I do to improve my Krishna consciousness, something. This, you can just a, a whole long list of things that you may consider, but choose at least one <laughs> and stick and stick to it, even if it's difficult. <laughs> Thank you, Hare Krishna. <laughs>